Guys, we have discovered the secret recipe for TikTok's famous pink sauce. It's perfect. Oh, Matthew, I'm, I'm not feeling really well. Have you seen the Pepto? <gasps> Minty. internet welcome to food theory the show that stays fresh without refrigeration today we're looking at the latest viral food phenomenon tiktok's infamous pink sauce this neon nosh has been sweeping the internet all summer leaving the tickers tweeters grammars and tubers all clamoring for a squeeze of the stuff and then clamoring for the nearest toilet as the sauce arrives unprotected spoiled or exploded all of this false propaganda that's going on on the internet i'm just a victim of clout. Victim of clout, huh? Well, I'd rather be a victim of clout than a victim of botulism. For those of you who are unaware of what I'm talking about because you refuse to download TikTok in fear of our international corporate overlords, I mean, in fear of how much you're gonna love your time on the platform, the pink sauce is a condiment that was invented by the self-proclaimed flavor genie, Chef P. A private chef who somehow doesn't know what the letters FDA stand for. What do you mean FDA approved? I don't sell medical product. Who could have expected that the Food and Drug Administration would show interest in a potentially unsafe food. No one tell her. I'm sure she'll figure it out eventually. The food that she's trying so unsuccessfully to defend here is this unholy concoction. Pink sauce. Basically, if you took Pepto-Bismol and put it into a squeeze bottle. One video of her slathering some fried chicken with the stuff blew up overnight thanks to its unnatural color. Suddenly, everybody wanted to know what this thing was. And you know what? They're still wondering. Despite hundreds of bottles of it being shipped out, because the packaging is absolutely riddled with errors. So while everyone in digital commentary land is out here telling you all the reasons that consuming the product is dangerous, which, let me be clear, it absolutely is, you should not buy this stuff and definitely don't consume it, I'm here today to instead figure out the question that everyone seemed to skip in the process. What even is the pink sauce? And can you make it at home safely? Thereby allowing you to avoid paying $20 for this sampler of salmonella. We're just gonna use our noggin and everything we know about food science which isn't a lot, to make pink sauce the safe at home way. Yeah. All the virality of the pink sauce minus one key ingredient, the actual viruses. In the past, we've managed to figure out KFC's secret recipe, so, I mean, how hard could this possibly be? Well, off the bat, there's one key thing that separates the pink sauce from the KFC secret recipe, and that's the fact that, you know, KFC actually has a recipe. It's consistent. It's repeatable. Meanwhile, here's the first video of the pink sauce, and here's another, and another, one more, and this is how it looks today. The color is different in literally every video posted about the stuff. For a sauce that is purely branded around its color, the color isn't even consistent. Heck, I wouldn't even call it pink anymore. Sometimes there are seeds in it. Sometimes there's not. Sometimes you can see chili flakes. Sometimes not. This stuff is never the same sauce twice. But I hear what you're saying. People already have the sauce. They have the label. That label has ingredients on it and nutrition information, right? Well, I can't tell you the ingredients that I use to make it pink, but it's pink. <laughs> no, no, you, you, you do kind of have to tell people the ingredients. Again, that is probably why the FDA wants to have a conversation with you. Pink sauce has only been an official product since the 1st of July. We began production. You guys are judging a prototype. Nothing like beta testing your sketchy food product on the people who paid $20 a bottle for it. Okay, now, to be fair, the bottles she's shipping out to people do actually have themselves a label and a sticker on the back of the bottle that says nutrition information. Then again, I can literally slap a sticker that says that onto anything and it doesn't necessarily make it true. <laughs> And in the case of pink sauce, if you think that nutrition label is going to give us an accurate picture of what's inside the bottle, well, your stomach is going to be paying for that mistake. I won't go into this too much because this is territory that's already been covered by plenty of other channels, but the label on the back of this thing is so far from correct, it's almost useless. For instance, the label says that there are 444 portions of the sauce inside of the bottle. 444! I, I mean, do I even need to go further than that? Have you ever seen a food product 
served with that many servings? The highest that I've ever seen is whipped cream, and that's only in the 70s. For almost any other condiment, a bottle of this size would usually contain between 30 and 40 servings based on a serving size of one tablespoon. And you can probably imagine that if they weren't able to get a basic number like that right, then things are really gonna fall apart once they start doing actual math. Like here, where the total number of carbs doesn't equal the sum of the sugar and the fiber. It should be 15, but it's instead listed as 3. Or what about here, where there's only one gram of fat listed, but supposedly there's more sunflower oil than honey inside this thing based on the order of its ingredients list, and sunflower oil is pure fat, so there's a gram of sunflower oil and less than a gram of all other ingredients here per serving? I mean, I guess if each of the 400 servings is like the size of a raindrop, then sure, checks out. There are also very few ingredients here that could provide shelf stability to the product, which is a big concern when you have a sizable amount of garlic and pitaya, both products that are perishable. It's also notable that this sauce in every video, and every different shade of pink, always appears as a creamy sauce. It's opaque, and it has a similar consistency to honey mustard, ranch, or mayonnaise. And yet, the ingredients list on the package contains nothing that would create a sauce that looks like this. There's no mention of dairy or egg products to be found that could serve as a binding agent that would give it this creamy consistency. Also, there's an ingredient here named vinegar. vinegar. We actually had to get this imported from yeah. some backwood shed. Really a specialty ingredient. See what I mean? It just completely breaks down. At the end of the day, this isn't an ingredients list, it's a word scramble. So in our attempt to uncover the real pink sauce, we're first gonna make our best attempt based on reverse engineering the nutrition label here. And be aware, I use the heaviest of quotes when I say that. If we don't come out with something that looks like or tastes like the pink sauce, we're gonna modify the recipe as little as possible to achieve something that looks and tastes closer to how online reviewers have described it. Can you compare it to anything? Sweet ranch. It's like sweet mayo. Also, just as a side note, no one even likes this stuff. On her TikTok page, Chef P keeps uploading videos where she forces the sauce onto people, and then everyone's just too polite to say anything negative about it. Your sauce is delicious. Yeah, you guys not. need to try it. Says the woman who practically refuses to try it herself. Blink twice if you're being held here against your will. Mm. She says, mm even before she tastes it. And then she refuses to look at the camera. Yep, you saw the caption. Reviews are coming in and they are bad. But this stuff is delicious and I don't know what it tastes like. <laughs> you don't know what it tastes like, huh? Well, that, my very uncomfortably scripted friend, is what we aim to find out today. So let's try making the sauce using the listed ingredients and nutritional facts to figure out the quantities. We're going to be attempting to make the sauce as it's uh, sort of written out in the ingredients and the nutrition information on the back of the actual pink sauce bottle. We'll explain in the video why we couldn't exactly uh, suss out a recipe, but we did the best we could. Sus! This recipe is, no, we, is pretty sus. Now, now we're legally obligated to also make a venting reference. So I'm, I'm gonna go over here and, and vent now. Vent, vent! Vent! Here I am! This is me venting! Vent! <laughs> oh, I see it. Oh, there's a vent it's, on the floor. It, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever heard of venting, Gregory? Back to the food channel. In order to make a decent sized quantity that we could test on a number of foods, we blended up 10 servings. So each part of the nutritional facts is gonna be multiplied by 10 as well. Starting with the sugar, there are 11 grams of sugar per serving and only two listed ingredients that have sugar content, honey and dragon fruit. Knife! Oh, whoa, this is really serious. Yeah, it is a very serious knife brought to you by our friend. Benjamin Andrew, Manish. thanks Andrew. <laughs> there you go. Speaking of quality merchandise, wow, thanks for commenting on my amazing shirt stuff. Oh my gosh, your shirt is amazing. Wow, which is available right below this video. Quality game theory merch. This really one's white. I see how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not. This one's gonna be red. Look, it's like a loot box. Which one are we gonna get today? Here we go. Come on, red, come on. Yeah! Yeah! Yes! yeah! Red dragon fruit. We used 122 grams of honey, giving us 100 grams of sugar, and 130 grams of dragon fruit, giving us an additional 10 grams of sugar, thereby amounting to 110 grams total. Just call us Chef P. Chef P as in Patrick. Chef P as in precision. Chef P as in pretty cool. I think we should keep moving on with the recipe now. Okay. Next up, we needed 40 grams of fiber. We already have four from the honey and dragon fruit, so we still need 36. The only other ingredient on the list that contains any fiber is the garlic, which has 0.2 grams per garlic, so we just need to add 180 cloves? Oh, jeez, this is already starting to break down. I'm not putting that much garlic in here, so we'll just do the rest of the recipe and see how it goes. The rest of the ingredients are distilled vinegar, water, Himalayan salt, and sunflower seed oil before we get to the less than 2% ingredients. 
ingredients. If we go by the one gram of fat per serving, then that means there's only one gram of sunflower oil in there. That's pure fat, so that's 10 grams of oil. Though watching the video of Chef P making the sauce, we seem to disagree on the amount of oil there, P. But I'm gonna continue going by the numbers that you have listed on your official nutrition label. Anyway, we did the same for vinegar and water and about 3 grams of Himalayan salt based on the sodium listed in the nutrition facts. Finally, the less than 2% of ingredients, we added 6 grams of spices, which were chili flakes and onion powder, 5 grams of citric acid, a small splash of milk, and lemon juice. After all of that, we were still missing a massive amount of fiber, but for the sake of our taste buds and Raleigh, North Carolina's garlic supply, I just added 2 cloves and called it a day. Then we blended it all up and hoped for the best. It's worth pointing out that again, the ingredients are supposed to be listed by the amount used proportionally on the recipe. Our order came out very differently, but in truth, it's just not possible to satisfy these nutritional requirements with the ingredients as they're currently written out. We're getting ready to blend. We'll get a sense of what color this actually is. Also, before I try this stuff, you have got to subscribe. I am putting my life on the line for you. Look at this. This is disgusting, but I'm testing it for science and for your enjoyment. So if that's not worth a hit of that subscribe button, I don't know what is. Subscribing is free. A stark contrast from the amount of medical attention I'm going to need after this episode. At first glance, one thing was certain. This was not the sauce that Chef P is using. The color is purple, not the Kirby pink that we were hoping for. Dragon fruit, while it provides color, is a watery fruit and left us with a runny broth, not a finger licking sauce. So not a great start visually, but remember, flavor wise, we're looking for something that's close to a sweet ranch. And wow, that is a, that is a trip for your taste buds. Oh man. It is sweet on the front end. It is garlicky throughout. I'm not a squeamish or picky person. I do not enjoy that flavor. It sort of had that going for it if you squint really hard, but it lacked any kind of creaminess because again, it has no binding agent or ingredient that creates a sticky, creamy texture. I gotta admit, so far, Chef P is failing her mission to, as the bottle says, excite my taste buds and thrill me with their creativity. The only thing creative about all this is their creative interpretation of the meaning of numbers. So in order to try and get a creamier texture with a color that better resembled pink sauce, I went rogue and took two different approaches. First, I added some mayonnaise to the mixture that we already made. Why mayo? Well, you see this right here, sitting next to Chef P in this video? I mean, what is that ingredient? It's white and it's viscous, which honestly doesn't apply to any other ingredient in the sauce. It's not mashed garlic, because you can see the garlic cloves floating there in the literal vat of oil that she created in the blender. In fact, I suspect that mayo may be acting as more than just an ingredient. You notice the yellow capped squeeze bottles that the pink sauce comes packaged in? Why wouldn't your pink sauce have, uh, I don't know, a pink lid? Yellow is nowhere to be found in her brand, unless your main ingredient is mayonnaise and you happen to have a ton of these yellow capped bottles just sitting around. Repurpose the old mayo bottles, wipe off the label, boom! You've got yourself a brand new product. Anyway, I figured the mayo would help build a nice stable creaminess where it's lacking right now. It tasted... Hmm. I definitely taste the vinegar. I definitely taste the garlic. And I get a little bit of the honey, but not really very much. For the other approach, I got serious. I knew that we were looking for a sweet ranch flavor, so why not just cut to the chase? I mixed our buddy Hidden Valley Ranch, hashtag not spawn, and the dragon fruit together. So our sauces are all mixed up. Yep. Now it's just time for the taste test. So on this side, we have our ranch, which has all of the great seasonings and spices, garlic, vinegar. It's got everything already in there. Yep. So all we did was add fruit. And basically we've got some nice fruity ranch. So, so really this is ranch, plus dragon fruit. Yes, ranch plus dragon fruit, that's Great. it. Great, On this Easy. side, we have sort of the opposite. So we have the plain mayonnaise, nothing in it, but we added our whole mixture to it. So in this one, our fruit mixture has the vinegar and the honey and the salt and the garlic and all of that. So we came to a similar color and consistency yeah. on both sides. I was gonna say, from a coloring standpoint, this is pretty much the, the quintessential pink sauce. And from a texture standpoint, it seems to be about what we see on TikTok. Yeah, from the ranch. I mean, it's ranch. It's great. Oh yeah, that just tastes like ranch. It's just ranch. You can't taste any of the fruit. You see the pink, but you don't taste anything remotely pink. It tastes like ranch, which is lovely. Who wouldn't like ranch? <gasps> Honestly, everyone's making a big deal about like, no, why does it cost $20 for one of these bottles? It's because she's buying this, plus like a $5 fruit. A dragon fruit's expensive. They are, they're really expensive. Each one's five bucks. You gotta charge a lot for that. Yeah. Okay, ready? We're gonna go for the yep. mayo plus mixture. Yep. I kind of like it. It's pretty good. I'm so ashamed of myself right now. It's a sweet mayo. It's, it's mayo with a kick. You definitely still don't no. taste the dragon fruit. No. In either one. Absolutely not. So the main ingredient in both of these is the mayo and the ranch. Yeah. The other stuff is just seasonings. Mm -hmm. And then 
The if color, that. yeah. I mean, the only Honestly. thing, the only thing that this dragon fruit is even doing is just color. That's nothing else. So what I think we need to do is actually combine these two guys to get the final, final pink sauce. And then we'll dunk some chicken. Yeah. That is the, that is the silver rouge work. I don't do you know? know do you know where things are? I do. It's your kitchen, I man. I do. But I'm on camera and I choked under oh pressure. My God. Oh, that's it. That's it. It's sweet ranch. So this is it. Homemade pink sauce. Plus, you can refrigerate it at home. Hey! Which is a big win. That way you can get a viral video without the virus. Only one thing left to do: the chicken test. Boop. Slather it in there like. Oh she yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, Acceptable! <laughs> so what is the pink sauce? Well, we can say for certain that it's not what's listed on the label. Very clearly, there's a major thickening or binding agent that's in this sauce that's just outright missing from the labeling. From here, we have to enter into the realm of speculation, but having spent the last week testing the sauce and zooming and enhancing every video of it I can find, I believe the actual recipe for the sauce is a combination of both of our tests. If it tastes like sweet ranch, Occam's razor, folks, it may just be full of ranch. The heat that people talk about is from the chili powder, like Chef P says herself on TikTok. Then there's a bit of sweetness from the honey that she shows in her oh-so-helpful infographic. That leaves us with only one thing left, the color. Now on her TikTok, she shows red dragon fruit being used. This video, by the way, looks and sounds like a murder basement. Now to be fair, red dragon fruit does produce a deep red color, so maybe she really is using the fruit as it's listed in the ingredients. That said, it's pretty far down the ingredients list, and what we found was that we had to add a heck of a lot of the stuff in order to achieve the color that we were going for. Dragon fruit is also an expensive ingredient, and it's adding a lot of work just to achieve the color. That said, if we use dragon fruit powder, which you can buy on Amazon, we actually had to use much less. It made things much more cost effective, and we didn't have to change the flavor of the sauce at all. So, pink sauce? It's basically just ranch, honey, dragon fruit powder, and a little chili. Maybe some mayo thrown in there for extra creaminess, and the bottle. So why lie about your ingredients? Well, the recipe for pink sauce isn't rocket science, and neither is the question. When you experience even a glimmer of fame on the internet, you know they have a very short window of time to make something out of it. Looking at Chef P's TikTok pre-sauce, you can see that she was already posting regularly, creating formats for herself, building a personal brand. She wasn't a person who accidentally became famous on the internet, she very intentionally became famous on the internet, and then tried to capitalize on it. Was she ready to launch a sauce brand? <laughs> no, clearly not. Again, we're way out of theory land and pretty far into speculation land at this point, but my guess is that she saw a one in a million opportunity and was so afraid of losing it that she rushed in and cut corners, both in the labeling and in the quality of the product that she was producing. She was afraid of losing her niche, so she refused to share her ingredients just in case someone came in and scooped her sauce along the way. At the end of the day, don't buy the pink sauce, duh, but also don't really buy stuff in general from people you might not be able to trust on the internet. Feel like I shouldn't have to say this, but here we are, friends. If you'd like to try the pink sauce, then make your own. It's not hard, we gave you basically the recipe here. And remember, the next time you see Pepto-Bismol in a bottle being peddled online, maybe you just give that one a strong pass. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. <laughs> She has this giant blender full of sunflower oil. I mean, it's like a vat of oil. She's gonna pour that on somebody at the castle gates. I mean, it's enormous. It's, <laughs> she's gonna pour it on someone at the castle gates. What? <laughs> Is it boiling? I, sh I just imagine who <laughs> don't oil on us. Gross. I'm just really slippery. <laughs> they would be deterred. <laughs> Imagine it being like one of those Japanese game shows where they're trying to climb up the slippery steps. And everyone's just like, whoa! And all the knights in their armor feel like, whoa! 